Here I am, a guy from Vancouver, British Columbia, making a video about an Edmonton and Calgary game. Because really, there are two big stories out of this game. For both teams, in fact. Both narratives are going in the complete opposite directions than we had thought, and this game on Sunday, October 13th, on this long weekend, just gives us even more fuel to talk about the Battle of Alberta's beginnings in 24-25. The Oilers ended up losing yet again. This time, it is a 4-1 defeat at the hands of the Calgary Flames, but it was not without its controversies. The Oilers only scored one officially, but they did have two disallowed goals. We'll talk about that a little bit as the video goes on, but really, I wanted to make this video primarily because of the narratives. The Oilers are winless in three games to kick off this season, with a 6-0 loss against the Winnipeg Jets, a 5-2 loss against the Chicago Blackhawks last night, and then of course the 4-1 loss to Calgary tonight. This Oilers team has allowed 15 goals against in three games, and they've only scored three. And heading into this game against Calgary, their PK was 1 for 6. What a terrible way for this Oilers team to kick off the 24-25 season, a season where everybody was saying they were cup favorites, they were President's Trophy favorites, they were Western Conference and Pacific Division favorites. Everybody was putting them up there, called them Yorgos Lanthimos and Emma Stone, because wow, were the Oilers ever favored. And it's not surprising why right? They improved their forward core, they were coming off of this crazy run where they came back and tied up the Stanley Cup Finals after being down 3-0, they were on the cusp of history, and they were essentially two goals short from winning the Stanley Cup last year. However, I mean, look, it's tough to go out there and say that a team that good can start out a season this poorly against teams like Winnipeg, against teams like Chicago, against teams like Calgary, that narrative, I think, as we had talked about in the video earlier this afternoon, is the big one, but I also wanted to go over the Flames themselves because their narrative is also pretty great. The Calgary Flames beat Vancouver, they beat Philadelphia, and now they've beaten Edmonton. They have done so in a pretty, I don't want to say like, dominating fashion? But they have been looking really strong to kick off this 24-25 season, and that includes guys that we have been expecting little and little from. Jonathan Huberdeau had a fantastic game yesterday against the Flyers. Martin Pospisil has been potting in points. Mackenzie Wieger had a bomb of a slap shot that he unloaded yesterday against the Flyers. And then today, you saw more goal support from guys like Connor Zary, who had scored the overtime winner in Vancouver. You saw goals coming out of extra surprising guys like Justin Kirkland, Rasmus Anderson was able to get on the board, and so was Anthony Manta. This Flames team was diversifying their offense, and a lot of their guys came up to play. It's like they knew, hey, it's the Battle of Alberta, we gotta show up and we gotta look good. And look good is exactly what they did. Now, this game had a pretty interesting dynamic throughout because the opening goal was scored by Edmonton. Beautiful play out in front, and it's Jeff Skinner who ends up putting the biscuit in the basket. He gets things started 1-0, but this is where things get a little bit interesting, because officially, on the score sheet, you'll see, oh, 1-0 Edmonton, and then Calgary scored 4 to win it 4-1. But there were two disallowed Edmonton goals in there that I wanted to talk about in this video here, too. The first one scored by Corey Perry was deemed goaltender interference. Even though, if you look at the replay, Corey Perry doesn't actually touch the goaltender Dan Vladar all too much. He doesn't even really interfere with him, quote-unquote. The only reason the goal was called off is because Perry spent a significant time of this play and inevitable goal in the crease. You can clearly see that his foot and his behind are all there in the blue paint, and the NHL even released a statement shortly after the goal review and decision to remove it saying, hey, he was in the crease. The wording they used was that he had a significant presence in the crease, which impaired Vladar's ability to play his position. I'm not going to go out there and say I necessarily agree with this assessment. I think that Vladar straight up just got beat by a tipped shot in front, but I do understand that the rule is the rule, and you can't go out there and argue with the rule book as it was talked about here. They deemed the call was no goal, and that's it. The Oilers also scored another really nice goal, passed out in front to Derek Ryan, who dangled the pants off of Dan Vladar and put the puck in the basket, but that goal was called off because of a very clear offside by Victor Arvidsson. 
A lot more unlucky and a lot less controversial because that one was very clear. Hey, his foot was clearly over the line and over the threshold of the blue line. Either way, though, two disallowed goals for the Oilers in short order allows the Calgary Flames to get some momentum back, tie the game up, and eventually take the win 4-1. to one. My question is here, though, where exactly do the Flames and the Oilers go from here? Are the Flames going to continue being a hot team and just start winning and winning and being better than we thought they would be? A lot of people were projecting the Flames to being last in the Pacific Division this season, and now... They've just taken out Vancouver, they've just taken out Edmonton, sure, they did Vancouver in overtime, but the Flames, they totally deserved the win here against Edmonton, playing off against a team with McDavid, Drysaddle, etc. that just did not look all too engaged. They had their moments, they had their opportunities, but when the going got tough, the Oilers just backed away. Who knows if it's something to do with the coaching staff, if it's just the early season problems bringing themselves up for Edmonton once more like we had seen last year, but as we had said last year, the Oilers were one of the worst teams in the NHL in the first few weeks, and then they came back, Connor McDavid had 100 assists on the year, impossible feat right there, and then they went to the finals. Things can happen with this Oilers team, but the question is, are they going to do that again? You can't just fire Chris Knobloch. You can't just hire Connor McDavid's high school janitor to be the cleanup guy here. There's not an easy avenue to explore to change the way this team plays. You gotta go down there into the nitty-gritty, the heart and soul of these guys. Is that the biggest problem for Edmonton right now? And furthermore, for the Calgary Flames, I mean, look, props to them. I was actually cheering for Calgary throughout this game and throughout yesterday's game. Part of that was because my opponent in fantasy this week has Stuart Skinner, and seeing him get lit up in this game was very good for my team. I also happen to have Martin Pospisil, Weaker, Huberdo, and Darnell Nurse on my team active in this game here, so it was nice to see them getting points, assists, and blocks and everything. Either way, though, I was interested in seeing Calgary take the dub because for Edmonton, the whole Vancouver-Edmonton rivalry is still something that I think has been brewing the past few months, so seeing Oilers fans and Canucks fans clashing on social media and then seeing Oilers fans get all disturbed that their team is playing poorly, it's kind of music to my ears for a Vancouver Canucks fan who spends way too much time trolling and looking at people trolling on social media. But either way, the Calgary Flames, it's a feel-good story because they were not supposed to be this good. Not at all. They were supposed to be a lot worse. They were supposed to show off worse. They were probably supposed to be destroyed by Vancouver and then taken out by the Oilers in Game 3, but nah, they ended up winning both of those games and beating the Flyers in between, so props to the Calgary Flames for getting the job done, keeping Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl down to just one point in this game. Connor McDavid had an assist, that's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Calgary Flames and the Edmonton Oilers. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.